Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup second round match between Wolfbark and Ungern. Ungern won the toss and chose to kick with his humans, Wolfbark receiving with Undead. And I don't think I've ever seen this kit before for Undead, but I thought it looked very nice. <laughs> um, Wolfbark is British, has a win, rate, win rating of 63% in Champs Ladder and qualified from the Goblin League. Um, Ungern is French has a 69% win rate in Champs Ladder and qualified from Champs Ladder 14 on PC. Um, so yeah, while, while, now while Wolfpack hasn't got such a good record overall, he did learn Blood Bowl in Champs Ladder and he's, he's got 82% with Undead, which is a lot a lot better, isn't it? I mean, obviously everyone's going to have better with certain races and what have you like. Pretty much everybody in here has got 80% with Wood Elves, but <laughs> not me, funnily enough. But a lot of people have got you know higher with certain races. But you know, that's a very impressive record with Undead he's got. And uh, yeah, this is uh, it's his drive. He's sp he didn't spend a double, he just got a guard. A guard mummy? Did he start with a guard mummy? I don't think he started with a guard mummy, he went guard. That's not bad, is it? Reroll. Reroll a double skull into a removal. You don't want to start with a removal, turn one. If you're on your on your own offense, obviously. You do on your defense, but uh Yeah, I think he just went guard. And I mean block would have been fine choice as well. But I guess he felt he was lacking the guard and went for that. Human team's got four guard and a mighty blow. Now Ungern made yeah, an interesting choice of leader on the ogre now. I would have rather gone leader on the thrower, but he's benching the thrower for the second half, which is a good... So, you know, he's got his strategy, hasn't he? His strategy is bench the throw and the catcher for the first half, make sure he's got them for the second when he receives, and then so that's why he's put the leader on the ogre. Now, I do think that maybe trading a skill for a reroll is, is kind of a good choice, but... I do think humans can get away with 12 players. I don't think we need 13. And, you know, when you think this could have been blocked on the uh, Ogre, I think... I think I would have been inclined to have gone three rerolls. Well, I don't think I would have been inclined. I know I would have gone 12 players, three rerolls, and an apple. But I like the idea of getting the extra player. Um, I like it a lot more with the Lizardmen player who went with the leader on the Crocs. I like that a lot more than this, to be honest. I think this is a bit... You know, he could have given it to a thrower. And I just, you know, I think they've got everything they need anyway. I think what they need more is actually more skills. So, I would have liked to have seen block there, really. Um, yeah, Wolfbark. I think Wolfbark should be engaging here, shouldn't he? He wants his mighty blow on his mummies to be doing work. Trading blitzers. It's not really... You know, he's not really in a superior position there, is he? So, I'm not sure I like this blitz on the Ogre. Maybe he could have blitzed one of these guys, maybe on three dice. Maybe he could have got guard in, jammed in a bit on offense. Uh, play, both playing, you know, both standing off. Wolfbark standing off on offense and uh, Ungern isn't doing anything because he doesn't have to. Just 2D and the people down. But yeah, that's the thing. Um, you know, when you look at Sage's second round game, his mummies were in action all the time. Obviously, he had one with block, and they both had guard. So there's a there's a lot more reason for those to be in. But still, they're still they're still strength five with mighty blow, aren't they? They want to be they want to be fighting and making things happen. The, uh, the mummies, I think. Jim Powell's there. I 
like the I like the screen there to stop him getting an Olga blitz to base the ball because you know you don't want to have to dodge away do you and it's pretty hard to blitz away a strength five guy. <laughs> Zombie dodge. Always dodge yeah, I tend to just leave them lying down, to be honest. So this is a bit so I thought he may have uh, blitzed with the ogre. But instead he makes a big commitment here in terms of players, you know, this is this is three humans. And the ogre to, to get the hit on the uh, mummy here. Which leaves him comparatively weak, either in the centre or on the left hand side. As well as, well, Wolfbach's left hand side. And he runs around, he bases the ball, a classic. And you know, basing the ball is sometimes good can't really dodge away with a ghoul. It's way too risky to dodge away. So he does he does control his blitz. But by having to use these three players to blitz instead of just one, if he'd done it with the ogre, um, he's left himself a little bit open on the left side, especially with that failed dodge. Maybe he could have even re-rolled that. It looks like a crap thing to re-roll. Um, but yeah, that, that gives him just enough, I think, to start moving forward a little bit here, finally, on turn 5. Also finally engaging with the mummy. Over here, but on bad terms over here, with the ogre around and other players. Obviously sucks giving up the mighty blow hit, but you've got to you've got to control the mighty blow tackler, haven't you? Dangerous player for your ghouls. Yeah, I like this. I like this move here from Wolfbark. I did think this was a big commitment to get that hit. And he kind of exploited the commitment by moving over here. Now the problem that he has is, of course. His guys are movement four for the most part, and humans are movement seven and and eight, so they can quite happily go and you know reposition. This was a good this was a good move to hit, so that the push would leave him stranded on one player. Um, I did like that, and then he gets a huge, huge injury. Um, so yeah, you know, the first time, I mean, to be fair, he was engaged on the human's um, kind of terms. If, I think if he if he got them stuck in against the strength three guys, oh, he does have a lot of guard, the humans. I think, you, if, you know, maybe it would have gotten better, but yeah, that's, uh, that's obviously clearly very unfortunate random cast, isn't it? No mighty blow or anything. To just, to just get an, a kind of naked hit like that to get a cars and no regen as well. Very unlucky for the fire. But all the guard is good, isn't it, for the humans? It is. They are a powerful team in this format. Getting the two extra skills and getting to load up on guard. It's looking really dodgy for Wolfbark, and uh, I mean, I did I did cast this game live. I really was impressed with his turn. Um, this turn, it may not look very impressive, but I was impressed by it. <laughs> him away with a punch.
dodge, obviously a bit risky, but you know, gotta do what you gotta do. And yeah, he's somehow he's defended the ball, you know, like there, there was I think that was absolutely the right play was to kind of just make sure he didn't lose it that turn because he could have easily gone in one nil down the way this drive's turned out, you know, he didn't get his he didn't get his mummy dom his mummy's dominating strength three players, they were just simply trading mighty blow blitzers. And then when they did get engaged, it was on the human's terms and one got removed. And while that was rem lucky and this was lucky, every remove was lucky, even when you've got mighty blow. You know, which turned that into a turned us into a KO. There's still just so much dice that you really can't give somebody credit for making a bunch of removals, even if they are hitting with Mighty Blow all the time, because at the end of the day, Wolfbark's made as many Mighty Blow hits, you know, as Ungern has. Well, nearly. Um, so yeah, this, this was, I think this was, a, and now this was a critical, a critical thing here, because this guy should have been here. He's not making a screen. He's just not doing anything. And he doesn't follow with the ogre. Now, it's turn seven, right? It's turn seven for Wolfbark. What can Wolfbark even do? Oh, he can dodge through here. How on earth do you not move this guy here or follow this up? That was really big mistake by Ungern there. And, uh, you know, I'm not being not being nasty or anything but that was he really had to do follow one of these things here uh, either position this guy here or do that because he's literally only got these what three players and he just hasn't made a screen so maybe it was a misclick or something um, but yeah absolutely huge to, to leave that hole there about to see as well <laughs> is a bit of a mistake from from Wolfbark here of course he's got dodge and uh, yeah he moves this ghoul into basically a nothing position now he's got dodge and he's got a reroll so, and it's a lot of dodges to make but he hasn't given himself basically a chance to cover this end and he's made these GFIs here, and he's made all these dodges. If he had just positioned this wrestle ghoul here, this is now suddenly a pretty good screen. And then instead he had to make these 4-4-3 four, four, moves. Didn't work out. Um, and yeah, you know, that was that was pretty much a big mistake by Ungern on defense. Um, that he basically got away with because of a big mistake by, uh, by Wolfbark. But, you know, again... They've got three minute turns there, they've got nerves, and there's pressure and everything. I'm not criticizing them as players, as coaches or anything. Um, this was this was also a mistake. Because there's one player that can base him with a double GFI, and if he'd stood here, he could not have been based. So that was that was a bit of a mistake by Ungern there. You know, and, and again, you know, in the heat of battle. Fair enough. Um, he didn't consider this zombie double kill fine. He just moved him straight forward because it was kind of easier to move him straight forward. But you know, slight, slight, you know, nitpicky mistake. But you know, just just for people watching, that's it, isn't it? You know, you know, it's, there's a lot of people, a lot of people who've said to me, you know, uh, thanks for the videos, and I've got a lot better in all this. So. I, at, at the time, I thought this foul was like really weird because it was with a blitzer. Um, and I still think it was really weird because it was with a blitzer. But ultimately, I guess if you remove a ghoul, it's worth removing one of your guys because he's just you know he's down players already. So Wolfbart does base him. Maybe maybe he wanted to cut out the one dice to chain onto the ball and get a scatter. And now he's got to uphill the ogre. And tries again to uphill the ogre, but gets a skull. So yeah, that wasn't wasn't the best drive ever from Ungern. And now there's a bit of a chance for the humans to score even, isn't there? I mean, 
it's okay making that block because it is it is a block against a goo, but it isn't relevant for the scoring attempt, is it? It should just block here and then block with the ogre if he has to, or odd blitz here. Oh, he's gone for the ghouls. I guess it's fair enough, and he gets a three dice with the ogre. Yeah, okay, okay. Ooh, I don't, I don't like this position there. That, that wasn't good. Oh, <laughs> he gets the triple vote down. Yeah, if he'd gone there, then he could have pushed here if the ogre boneheaded. Um, and then he could have push, pushed again to uh, try, get another chance. So, you know, again, just a, just a slight a slight misplay. You know, I'm, not, I'm not hating on him at all. Um, but his kit is way worse than Muffbacks. <laughs> <laughs> These are brilliant. I can't believe I've never noticed them. I wonder if they're a... I don't know if they're a DLC or a default one, but I think I think the kit looks brilliant. That's definitely my next Undead team is going to have that kit. And, um, yeah, so the, the Undead are actually down to 10 players, aren't they? Yeah. So humans are still on 11. The humans actually not really getting any value from their... Uh, from their extra players, but you know they could have done. Uh, it would you know easily could have got some removals with the two mighty blow guys. But now the the undead look a bit crap, don't they? With only one of them. To be honest. Mm, I'm not sure. This kind of thing has the desired effect. I mean, it's nil-nil. You know, he's although he's down a player, he could just try to stall it out. Uh, run gun. I mean, yeah, okay. This, you know, he's he's playing pretty aggressively, isn't he? He's trying to get, trying to get his ghouls into play. Trying to get, you know, for, crack something open here, which is, you know, it's fine. Good. Wow. Good job that he made the blitz with a with a block instead of moving, instead of hitting with the ogre. Um Yeah. Big kick as well if that if that had gone out. If he'd failed that sure hands and it had gone out. So it did have the desired effect anyway, he dodged away. But um Yeah, I don't know, I think this is You could certainly argue that Ungern should just try to take it to overtime and then hopefully he wins the toss. But um, he's kind of going for the turnover here, I think, to try and win it in normal time. Which is fair enough, isn't it? So he keeps all of his ghouls together here, and then he runs this ghoul down there, which is, uh, I don't know, man, there's 75%, there's no one else really worth blitzing. This seems an easy 75% free shot at a ghoul. And he gets the boat down, he gets a Kaz. Now obviously getting the Kaz is lucky, you know, but I think just launching an unprotected ghoul over there was maybe a bit a bit foolhardy, you know, a bit reckless. He's just going to bring this guy over here and screen off the whole thing. I don't know if he's brought the thrower a bit further forward, but I guess it's okay not. Oh, he's got tackle, so he goes down. Could blitz there and then maybe jam through. This, this is not a bad play, is it? Blitz there. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, I don't like that. I think you go one, two, three. And then blitz a hole through here. And then, you know, sure it's risky. But you can put your white on on the tackler. And then, get you know, get the ghoul through here. I think I think that was maybe a play. You know, cause it, just because he's got the ball in his backfield here, isn't he? Pretty much unprotected. You, if you could kind of somehow get these guys through and do something, um, he's really not getting any pressure on there. 
I mean, he's building pressure for the next turn. But the problem is he's got four players who can just run away. And again, I'm not being... I'm not being super, super, super harsh to anyone here. I mean, maybe, you know, I'm just trying to, trying to, you know, offer insights and alternatives, you know. And he gets the, another removal. I mean, that is absolutely huge. You know, he's, he's hit ghouls twice this half. And he's cast them both time. Effectively cast because they're out for the rest of the match if if Ungern scores. So two removals from two blocks on ghouls is, is pretty good. <laughs> and you know he's far enough away from the, the players here that it's, there's no danger, is there? The old GFI blitz. Gets the power and gets the cast. So, you know, Wolfbark rolling some dice there as well. Oh, it's looking really bad. I mean, when players down like this, the zombies just look awful, though, because all they can do is, like, face somebody. But also, because now because he's men down, the ghouls look horribly exposed. And in fact, he's even based voluntarily. Gonna GFI. Oh, GFI so we can punch him. Rerolls the GFI. Double. Oh. Oh. Into a stun. Into your ghoul getting two dice blocked. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty unlucky. Um, but, you know, Wolfbark's played this half. Uh, sorry, Ungern's played this half. You know, perfectly, hasn't he? Um, He's blocked. He's blocked ghouls three times and removed them each time. Um, that is absolutely spot on tactics. People say just blitz the skinks against lizards, and you know, implying that every time you blitz a skink, you cast them. That is often not the case. Um, in this game, it was the case. And you know, you know, he, I'm not saying that Wolfbark was wrong with the defense he chose. He could have chosen a different one. He could have pressured in a different way. He could have stood off and protected the ghouls and, you know, try to stall him out for all the time. You know, that's tough when he's got the catches and stuff and the mighty blows. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, if you get these... If, you know, if someone's making three blitzes and making three cars, um, there's not really anything you can do about it, is there? Another block, another removal. And... Yeah, at this point, it's looking pretty much over for Wolfbark now. Six players off the pitch. Six players left. And four of them are over here. One's stunned. One's a surrounded zombie. So, yeah, at this point... At this point, it's getting to the place where you can say, well, there's nothing I could have done. Um, and, you know, maybe there wasn't. But maybe there was. Um... But, you know, I, th I do think Ungern has played well. I think he played quite well on defense, apart from really just that one, the one critical turn seven was the only really time he did anything bad on defense. So, you know, and then that was matched by Ungern making a mistake on offense as well, I think. But now it's just... Uh, it's just bad times for Wolfbark, isn't it? There's just really, really nothing you can do with six, six players from an undead team on the pitch. If he had six Wood Elves, he'd be having a shot. However, if he had Wood Elves, maybe he'd only have three players left on the pitch at this time. Um, but yeah, they were they were just brutal. Those blitzes on the ghouls, weren't they? Absolutely brutal. Decided the match, pretty much. Everything else was irrelevant, you know. Sure, Ungern could have been 1 0 up, and sure, he could have played a different tactics in the second half. But at the end of the day, if every time you blitz, you're removing somebody <laughs> like this, um, that's pretty hard to deal with, isn't it? You know, because like Ungern's good as well. 
if if it had been a really bad coat with the humans, maybe maybe Wolfbart could have done something, but it wasn't, and he couldn't. <laughs> Four players on the pitch. <laughs> One's movement three, one and agility one. Move, one's movement four and agility two. You know, two only two agility three. But, oh no, he's got this one as well. Right, fair enough. But um, realistically, yeah, he's got nothing. He's got nothing and no hope. So yeah, it's it's horrible in to get dice like this. And I think you know, I think the second half was a dicing quite like, clearly. But that doesn't say that Ungern didn't play better, and it also doesn't say that Ungern doesn't deserve to win. But what it certainly does say is that, um, you know, it would have taken something really special for Wolfbart to have won this game. It's another ghoul. Doesn't kill him. Shocker. <laughs> Absolute shocker. <laughs> He could even foul now, couldn't he? In case of overtime. Right, in case of overtime. In case there's something. You know, this school could go there and one dice blitz and base the ball. So, I wouldn't hate fouling him. I don't see any reason not to foul him. Yeah, good. I mean, that's probably the problem with Blood Bowl, isn't it, really, that the best time to to foul somebody is when you're standing on their neck and not to not let them back into the game. Whereas, you know, like, it really is generally only done by somebody who's way behind or way ahead. Which is why it's kind of like people, you know, say unnerf DP and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, the problem is with fouling is that it's really only used by people who are miles ahead. So I'm not even sure it would it would, it would it would balance claw palm a bit. Of course, Blood Bowl 2016 just abolished piling on, which was a good change in my book. But yeah, shame shame for Wolfpack, isn't it, to really just have his chance taken away. Um, but you know, he'll know that he could have he could have done things differently. Arguable whether they're better. Um, you know, it's all risk versus reward and stuff, but really the, the wrestle ghoul when he when he broke through and just went to a nothing square, you know, that was that really was a, a, a mistake I think. Um, you know, and he could have played the second half differently defensive wise. But you know, when you get out bashed this hard you just gotta it's just one of them things in it, you know, you just gotta the <laughs> death, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> oh dear. Four players left now. So, just spawn it all over. I guess there's a chance. There's a chance of these three coming back, and then that's four, five, six, seven players, and them getting a riot and scoring, and they're being overtime, but I really, really hated this blitz, even though it's three dice. If ever a block deserved six skulls, <laughs> it was maybe that one, because, you know, you just take the score, I don't know. Man. I was pretty, pretty surprised by that. I didn't really get it. I mean, sure, it's a mighty blow hit, and there might be overtime, but it's the chance of the overtime is so low, isn't it? And even if he got to overtime, he's got no players, so he can't really do anything. But I guess, you know, maybe it's worth it. I mean, the chance of him failing is, is ridiculously low, like 1 in 44,000 or something stupid. But still, if you fail it, you down to one reroll. I'd probably rather have the chance of having the reroll. You know, <laughs> what what is it? One in one in two hundred and sixteen to use a reroll. That to me is not even worth the risk of doing it. For the, however, you know, when you think how low the chance of overtime is, 
I'd probably rather have two over, you know, take my chances of having two rerolls for it. For one in 216, but you know, fair enough, fair enough, you went for it. Right? Don't think it was super, super worth it to go for it, but there was some value to be had. It wasn't just, it wasn't a moronic blitz, <laughs> you know. There was, it there really could have been overtime. He could have got a riot and, you know, scored somehow. You know, ridiculous dice happen. You know, look, look at Sage's touchdown in the first round. So, fair enough, he did something that wasn't really necessary. It gave him a bit of protection against ridiculous, outrageous dice. However, it also left him susceptible to ridiculous, outrageous dice at the same time. So, I'm not 100% behind that block, but I can see why he did it. And, you know, again, that's, that's just my opinion, as is everything. But, yeah, I think, you know, 15 AV breaks from 33 blocks. Of those 15 AV breaks, four were Kaz. Uh, four were KOs, you know, it's like, I, I do think Wolfpark was hard done by by the dice, but then also I think Ungern, you know, defended, defended better and deserved the win. So there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.